Hi, Matt McAleer, Director of Equity Strategies at Cumberland Advisors. January 14th, I'm here with the Moose, John Mousseau, our President and CEO and our Director of Fixed Income. John's going to get us caught up with the debt markets, find out what he saw this week. In terms of the equity markets, same pattern, right? Pressure on tech, specifically your more aggressive tech areas. One thing that we have to be aware of is a lot of this single stock risk. Right? We saw that today in one of our holdings in our tactical portfolio. JP Morgan came out this morning. Earnings were okay. Expenses a little high. Some of the fixed income trading revenues a little light. Bam! Down 6%. Right back down into that 156, 157, 158 area. So it's quite a channel. JP Morgan's building up between 153, 154, and 170. Every time we make a run to that 170, John, I think we're through. I think we're through it, and they knocked me back down. Right, right. Yeah. So in terms of what we are, where we're sitting in portfolios, quiet week in U.S. ETF. No real trades there. Sitting about 15, 16, 17 percent cash there. Tactical trend. Same thing, about 15% cash. Last trade there was an add to our metals and mining security, XME. Brought it up to 5%. Trades well. Trades nice and dry in an environment that can get a little bit whippy from day to day. In terms of what we're looking for to continue is, I think, an awful lot of the same. And that is you're going to benefit from a barbell portfolio. I mean, it's easy to see that value has ripped, right? We look, at, we look at energy, we look at banks, we look at utilities even. A little quiet this week, but overall strong. That won't continue ad infinitum. You get to a scenario where you wring out some of the uh, over, overbought areas, you start getting 80, 90, 100% overbought on some of the weekly analytics we look, look at, and you start to see a snapback rally out of growth. So we don't want to give up entirely on growth. We want to try to stay barbell. That, I believe, will continue to be the rule this year, just like last year. Remember, when we, when we split the S&P between growth and value, there's an S&P growth index and an S&P value index. They were nearly identical. When we look at S&P 500, cap-weighted, SPY, versus S&P 500, equal-weighted, RSP is an ETF you can take a peek at. Identical performance last year. So it has paid to try to spread out your breath within your portfolios. We'll try to keep hunting in that area. Moose, what do you have fixed income wise? This week, Matthew, I'm really treading water. Uh, we had the consternation of last week where we saw rates rise and we said we thought this week would be kind of a quiet week. Well, you ended up quiet, even though there was some movement. The 10-year bond, 175. The 30-year bond, Treasury, 212, right where they were last week, yep. although moving around it. However, the 2-year bond, up 10 basis points to a 0.9. Um, it kind of proves what you said, barbell. Barbells work well on the bond side, too. We barbell with shorter term and longer term, probably shorter than benchmark durations. Um, unis, no movement at all this week. Calendar starting to build a little bit. That's what we expect. That should cheapen that market up a little bit as we go forward. Um, the real story of the week, inflation. CPI, again, came in a little higher than expected. Came in at 0.5. Um, they're expecting 0.4. The real story, though, trailing 12 months, now we're at 7. And the story is the Fed has to worry about that from a public relations standpoint. Right. What are they going to do? And what we are pretty sure they're going to do is they are cutting back on their purchases. That will be done by March. When March gets here, they will start to raise short-term interest rates. How fast is a question? Certainly two or three hikes this year, depending on how the economy does. Um, we had a question from a viewer. Do you think that the 10-year bond will reach 2%? Absolutely. When is the question? Our story is we think inflation starts to come down a little bit. Uh, the monthly number should start to look a little better. Some of those supply chain disruptions should start to go away, particularly as the Omicron virus gets behind us. Um, 
but it won't go back down to 2% inflation. It'll probably level off somewhere 3.5, 4, 4.5. 4 As it does that, bond yields should start to rise to get to a positive real yield. You know, another question was, uh, do you see the, you know, Fed starting to raise short-term interest rates um, after they've cut back on their purchases? And the answer is yes, just like I described. So, you know, that's ahead of us. Uh, we expect the bond yield curve to flatten out, means short-term yields will rise faster than long-term yields. You're already seeing a lot of that. Yeah. You know, a couple quick things, Moose. Sometimes you read about a second-level derivative. And let's take the other side of the inflation story, right? Because all we see is inflation right. headlines. I was reading a little bit this week that the velocity of the change in inflation, October, November, into December, actually fell a little bit. So it ran higher, yes, but at a lower velocity. Did right. you see that at all? Yes, and the, the way you tell that is even though the year-over-year -year numbers have been creeping up higher, that's easy math because you're replacing low numbers from a year ago. Right. In fact, January a year ago was zero. Hmm. Um, and you're replacing those with higher numbers. Those monthly numbers that we saw not too long ago, which were printing at 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 in some cases, are coming down. You know, 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.6. All of that will lead to a lower run rate than the seven that we're looking at. The question is, is how low does it go back down? And we don't think it goes back down to two, somewhere somewhere in the middle. Call right. it three and a half to four. Yeah, yeah. There's never a perfect script. No, there's so, not a perfect so script. So we'll try to, you know how I like to say, we try to uh, not trade beyond our headlights. We no. don't try to look too far behind our, he beyond our headlights. We'll be keeping an eye open next week. Keep in mind, markets closed on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. We'll get back at it on Tuesday, and we will see you next Friday. Have a great weekend.